you were talking, I was thinking about um, like the different kinds of people. We talked about it a little bit last time too, but the different kinds of um, people that might attract to this that you would also love to work with because that's that's always where I come from right like you want to be fulfilled in your work and you will be fulfilled in your work if you're doing this but there are certain types of problems that you will find yourself loving to discuss more than others right yeah so I I wondered if um if you have taken a look yet at of all the different people that you've had, that you've had the opportunity to do this work with, mm -hmm. right? Like which ones have you really felt completely turned on with? Like, is it people that are experiencing relationship problems where they're going from one unhealthy relationship to the other? Is it, yeah. you know, people that are, you know, like, has has there has a pattern emerged for you yet? That's a very interesting question. Uh, I'm pretty sure in your line of work, you don't find satisfaction in just helping people, but you want to see that you took them from point A to point B. Absolutely. Point B being whatever it is, the goal is ultimately. So as coaches or guides, it's important for you to see that you've taken somewhere, someone from somewhere they used to be, and you took them in a better place where they wish to be, right? And that gives you a sense of satisfaction. Honestly, the most rewarding subject I've worked on so far has been my wife. What I found interesting was it took us years to get to the bottom because she had some very deep um, uh, history of abuse, verbal, mental abuse, physical abuse, even sexual abuse in some form. And this is something that she had lived with her whole life. And she's been through several rounds of therapy. She did EMDR. She started with this, you know, like a psychology, psychotherapy, like talk therapy. She got, you know, once they found out she was a trauma case because she's the bona fide trauma case in the clinical sense. And she was kind of escalated to a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist recommended that she sees an EMDR expert so she went through several rounds of the mdr um, therapy and even after all of that she felt like she just couldn't find a way out um she felt like she was literally like drowning so the thing is a lot of times people find a way to live with it whatever mm -hmm. challenges they have, their trauma or whatever, you find ways to live with it. But then you are like just a trigger away for everything to come back up to the surface. So in her case, it was, because we, we had a pretty normal relationship. I mean, I knew she had trauma. You know, We talked about it briefly. But it was not, again, it was something that we just managed to live with. It was okay. But then there was an incident at the house. I was out of town. There was an explosion across the street. We were living in a city, like we were living downtown at that time. And there was an explosion across the street. And she was pregnant at the time. And she had a miscarriage. And so it was a combination of going through the trauma of the explosion. Because it was pretty like a pretty serious thing like all the windows like they had to board all the windows overnight just for people to come in and fix the windows the next day it was like all the glasses everything the windows were blown up and after that event it became increasingly difficult to just keep it all in 
So that's when the therapy sessions began and she went through several rounds of it. So it the whole process took like a year, year and a half. But then after all of that, she's just like she's she was not well. You know, she was severely depressed. Um and it felt like she just she was stuck. She just didn't know where to go from there, you know, and it started to affect our relationship. And then one day, because she kept looking at some coaches and stuff online, and I was like, listen, these people don't know you. They don't know the depth of what you've been through. And I don't think a few hours or whatever session is going to be that much of a difference. So I was like, listen, I've been working on certain things. I have some ideas because I tried some of them on myself. Let's work on them. And we started working together, right? And then there were steps. I had to get to the bottom of certain things, certain things I did not know. Uh, and it got deeper and deeper and <laughs> heavier and heavier. But she was committed to the process. And it took us over a year, really, just working on it. I would give her a break every once in a while, maybe a month or two, because there were steps to follow. Mm -hmm. And now, like the person she is now, compared to what she was about 18 months ago, it's like day and night. And that's when, that's actually, that was my motivation behind writing this book. Because I mean, I can go around and start saying things on, you know, Instagram and TikTok or whatever, but this is something that I had to not only come up with to help myself when I needed to, but it was able, I was able to make a difference in her life. By going through the process with her, we actually defined methods, steps to take, right? Because that's some severe trauma. So, but that gave me the experience and a deeper understanding of trauma to the point where you have people that live with PTSD that don't realize they live with PTSD, right? Um, trauma goes undetected. People don't talk about it. You know, many, many women are, I hate to say, many women are forced to live with their trauma and never speak about it, ever. And probably never will. Because they don't want to open those doors and bring those things back to the surface. You know, some people may have children and families and they don't want to jeopardize whatever comfort, balance they have right now. So they just choose to live with it. So if you ask me like what type of cases that I like to work on, I can tell you what I found the most rewarding was seeing where she was at the beginning and where she is now. In terms of what? In terms of her mental health and her sense of self-love. Self acceptance, self self fulfillment, <laughs> you know, because now she's in position to help her family because she comes from an environment where certain things are just part of everyday life. They don't talk about it in generation after generation. Young women are subjected to these types of abuse and stuff like that. And now she's finding the courage to work and help people in her family. Uh, help them understand trauma, help them understand that certain things need to be talked about and brought to the surface. So seeing that transformation, so basically I see her bloom into her true self. So I see, I, I saw her go from a trauma victim, right, to now she became the source, the, the inspiration behind this work that I'm doing. So to me, talking about from A to B, to me, that's like a complete 
success story, right? So to answer your question, I like to take things from point A and know that I've taken it from here and we took it from a, to a place where we can all agree this is a much better place, right? So I guess what my challenge with this type of work is when people lack the commitment to go all the way through. So the, the ideal person for me is a person that is at the point of their, in their lives where they recognize that this is almost like a life or death situation. It has to be done. And they're committed to seeing it all the way through so that we can get to that point together and see the result, that transformation. I guess that's the, that's the key. A full transformation for someone being a victim of their circumstances or their past to being a fully actualized version of themselves, reconnecting with themselves and feeling like this is who I am and this is who I'm meant to be in this life.